it's finally here, the Mega Drive Mini 2. This is the Japanese version, obviously from Amazon Japan, as you can tell by the text there. Let's open it up and see what the unboxing experience is like. So I just got the basic Mega Drive 2 uh, Mini model since I already have the uh, expansive version of the original Mega Drive Mini so I don't really need the same thing with the Mega Drive Mini 2 but the reason I bought this is because I'm interested in the unreleased games plus that we make a Space Harrier so let's check it out so what I'm going to do is do the unboxing on the day of release or second day of release depending on which part of the country uh, which part of the world you live in and um, I'm going to play it for a couple of days and then I'll do a video of what I think of it. So I'm going to have some time to get to grips with it, um, sample it, see if the lag is a problem, anything like that. Rather than just doing a quick, here it is, I've got out the box, never played it, but I can review it, type video. So we're going to have a bit of um, nostalgia. Now this set I got from Amazon should come with a power supply unit. Now the reason I did that is because with the Astro City Mini, um, they were saying the bigger the power supply, the better quality uh, the machine performed. So Amazon have provided a power supply recommended by Sega that should work with this. So uh, let's take a look. Um, yeah, where's my power supply? <laughs> no power supply. What the hell? Hang on a minute, I have to go to Amazon about that. Well, here it is. This is the Mega Drive Mini, and just to show you how small it is, here's my phone next to it. <laughs> yeah, it's the size of a phone. Oh, man. And, uh, yeah, a little bit more scale there. This thing is very, very small. It's tiny. So, yep, 60 titles, 16-bit. This looks like the Japanese uh, Mega Drive 2 box. Apart from it's got Mega CD there. And uh, let's see, on the side we've got a load of text. And on the back we've got some images of the game. So we've got the Mega CD titles there and the Mega Drive titles there. And here we have all the special titles, all the unreleased or specially made titles for this device. All right, and uh, some information there. All right, so let's open it up and see what's inside. Maybe the power supply is inside the box. Okay, here we go. Guess we open it like this. Ah, there we go. There's the power supply. So it actually did come with a power brick. Let's just check the ratings on that. Yeah, it's only a bit of plastic. So this is, I have to get a closer look, 5 volts, 2 amps. So it's not exactly power power hungry uh, power supply is it uh, we got the uh, USB C to USB mini sorry USB A to USB mini and here we have the six button controller of course that's USB got an HDMI cable and the Mega Drive mini itself okay let's take a look at that really is small Wow that is nice oh even the cartridge port works kind of so I suppose you can get some look in fact I've got a cartridge over there let's put a cartridge in it okay here we go we've got a Sonic and Knuckles and a Sonic the Hedgehog so let's put Sonic the Hedgehog in there <laughs> oh yeah that looks perfect let's try it with Sonic and Knuckles and Sonic the Hedgehog Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so um, that's your power switch, that works. Reset switch, that works as well. We've got our USB inputs here on the front. And on the back of the device, we've got our HDMI out and the uh, USB micro input there for your power. Got HDMI written on the back. On the bottom of the device, uh, let's see. We've got the Sega stickers, which you would have on a real Mega Drive 2. 
Of course, these uh, say different things. Some health warnings there. We've even got the clip so it connects onto a mega CD. And the expansion port opens as you, as you would expect. Of course, there's no uh, PCB there. So I wonder what this looks like compared to the original Mega Drive Mini. Um, let's line them up both together and take a look. So here we have the original Mega Drive Mini and the Mega Drive 2 Mini next to it. And as you can see, it is in scale. Not bad at all. But what I'm interested in knowing is how does the Mega Drive 2 Mini look like on the Mini Mega CD setup? Now there is a Mini Mega CD 2 setup, which I didn't buy because I have the original one here. So let's take off the little clip there and connect it up and see how that looks. Hopefully it should connect correctly. If we just get the little tabs in here, easier said than done, I think. Uh, yeah, there we go. So um, yeah, it looks just as ridiculous as a full-size Mega CD and the full-size Mega Drive 2 on top of it. So it's time for a direct capture. And as you can hear, we've got some nice background music using Mega Drive sounds. This was produced by Yuzo Kushiro, no less. Okay, so first of all, we'll go into the options by pressing the X button. At the top, we've got basically a quick start guide. Then we've got a language select, which has got English, French, uh, Italian, German, Spanish, uh, Chinese, and Korean. All right, let's uh, put that back into uh, Japanese. Actually, well, I'll just show you. If you put it in Korean, um, you get the Japanese style, since uh, Korea did use the Japanese style box art and the Japanese style backgrounds. Um, but sadly, if you put it into English, it uses the Genesis background and the Genesis box art. Box art. Now, no offense to anyone in the States, but personally to me, this is the ugliest version you could have. I mean, it's got the worst box art, it's got the most dull looking background. It's not very attractive. And I kind of feel sorry for the people in English speaking PAL territories, because that's the background they're gonna get. Uh, but for example, if you put it into French, you'll get the uh, European background, which we also got in the UK, and I believe Australia and New Zealand as well. And um, you get all the European box art. But unfortunately in the UK, you may end up with the Genesis background and the Genesis back, uh, box art. I'm not sure, I've not seen the British version of this. But anyway, we're gonna put it back into uh, Japanese, since that is much easier for me to understand. Okay, here we've got game settings. So we've got screen modes. We can have it in four x three, which is the correct way, or super stretch 16 by nine, no thank you. If you press C, you can switch on a CRT filter. Um, as you can see, we've got a little icon in the corner there, which tells us the CRT filter is on. Uh, I don't like the CRT filter. It's got scan lines, but they've gone and put it out of focus. Why people think CRT is out of focus? I don't know, because they never were. At least not where I'm from. We used RGB SCART and it was always in focus. Okay, then we've got a choice of backgrounds. Most of them are garish and horrible, such as that. I do like that uh, little blueprint there, the Mega Drives. Got some interesting ones. You can have no background at all, but personally, I like this one. Now here's something that's really nice, the sound mode. You can have it in Mega Drive 2 sound or Mega Drive 1 sound, which has a bit of a low pass filter on it. Here, take a listen. So you may not be able to tell, unless you're listening to this on a good speakers or decent headphones, but there is a difference. Okay, next we've got the mode button setup. 
Uh, basically the mode button will bring up the uh, options, so we've got a quick option there. Hold down the button for one second to bring up the options, hold down the button for three seconds to bring up the options, switch the mode button off, and then just hold down the start button for a couple of seconds to bring up the quick options. Um, just having the top uh, option set means the uh, options come up as soon as you press the mode button. Okay, um, so that's the game settings. And then we've got the uh, staff credits with a pretty poor representation of the Mega CD background. Um, now, people who have never seen a Mega CD might think that this, this looks really rough, and it does. A real Mega CD is a lot smoother than that. I can tell you that for sure. But um, skipping through all the credits, you'll find out that this device is made by M2, which is a great sign, and it's also a reason why the lag is a lot less than the uh, Astro City Minis. We'll do a lag test later on in the video. And finally, we have um, all the different uh, copyrights and sources and whatever there. Or the legal notices, which no one's going to read. And then we have a factory reset of the machine, which takes away all your save data. All right. Some games have extra options. So for example, if we go to, let's see, uh, Denon Alester, or Robo Alester in English, we go here, and when we press start, we get a choice between the Japanese version or the Western version. And that means we get Japanese or English audio. Unfortunately, that is not the case in all games. So let's take a look at the Japanese version. So we get the uh, Kabushiki Kaisha Sega Enterprises screen there, which is on all Japanese Mega CD models. For a moment I thought they'd taken out the uh, narration, and if we press start we'll get the uh, Japanese title screen of course, which is a uh, Den and Alester. Once it loads up that is. Now loading, okay. So while I'm here, I'll uh, quickly show you the uh, option menu. So you can bring this up by pressing the mode button. At the top we've got save data and load data, so we'll do a save data here. Pick a slot, up to four slots per game. And um, here we can uh, reset the game, go back to the main menu or return to the game. So we just return to the game, we'll start the game. And you'll see that the uh, loading of the uh, save state is perfectly fine. Bring up the menu again, load, pick a save state, yes, and there you go. Okay, so let's uh, return to the main menu, and what we'll do is we'll take a look at the uh, American version, and you'll see, or the English version I should say, and you'll see that it has the speech in English and the English tile screen. Basically, it's the English version of the game. We also get the uh, Western boot up screen as well. This story is set back in time, about 500 years. There you go, see, it's all in English. And of course, we're going to get the English version title screen as well, which will be Robo Alester. Actually, looks quite different. There we go. All right. So. It is good that some games are like that, but unfortunately not all games are like that. Only a handful of them have the English and Japanese versions of the game, which is a bit of a shame because I would have liked to have seen some of the other games translated. By the way, some games have also been modified a little bit to be a little bit better. For example, Tatsujin here, or Truxton in English. You can either play with the normal background music or the arcade background music. Yeah, just check this out. Start with the normal music first. Okay. 
Okay, that's pretty cool, right? It's uh, as you expect it to be. But check this out, we can now play the same game, but with the arcade music. Pretty cool, right? Okay, music on your Mega Drive Chuxton or Tatsujin, whatever name you want to call it by. But not only do we have some sound changes, we also have some game modifications to speed up games. For example, uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, Star Cruiser, okay? Now we have original mode or high speed mode. So what I'm going to do is record both of these separately and play them side by side on the screen so you can see the difference in speed. The high speed mode makes this game very playable. So as you can see, Star Cruiser has been vastly improved and I believe that will run on a real Mega Drive. All M2 have done is gone in there and updated the um, actual code of the game. Now something that probably won't work on a real Mega Drive is this. This is a uh, Space Harrier 2, but they actually have Space Harrier 1 in here as well. And this has been recoded to take advantage of the Mega Drive if it had scaling. As you can see, it come up Sega Mark 5 there. Sega Mark III being the Sega Mass System, Sega Mark IV being the Mega Drive, and obviously this is going to be Sega Mark V, which is Mega Drive hardware, but with scaling capabilities. And just take a look at this. It's by, by all the Mega Drive uh, limitations, you know, Mega Drive color palette, Mega Drive sprite limits, um, basically everything is limited to what a Mega Drive can do, but they've added scaling capabilities to the hardware. Just check this out. Get ready. So as you can see, there is a bit of sprite flicker and I'll just let these balls get a bit closer and you'll see even more sprite flicker. But it is very impressive. Considering this is running on basically what should be a Mega Drive but with sprite scaling technology built in. The game even slows down when you get a lot going on. So yeah, they're certainly not um, you know, emulating a 32X or anything like that. But it is pretty cool to see what a Mega Drive could have been like if it had sprite scan technology built into the hardware. You're doing great. Now 
and of course Space Harrier 2 also got the same treatment. Now this did come out on an original Mega Drive and it was a pretty horrible game. It was slow, jerky, not very fun to play in my opinion. This version it has all the same restraints as the original game so you don't get the sprite flicker in but it uses the sprite scaling technology as if it was built into the Mega Drive. Just imagine seeing this in 1989 when it came out in Japan. You would be blown away, of course. It never would have happened. Mega Drive would have cost way too much money. Okay, so which Mega CD games have the English and Japanese versions on them? Well, Sonic CD does, the Japanese version there, or English version. So yes, English version basically means the American version in all these cases. So you get the uh, US soundtrack, whether you like that or not, it's a choice of opinion, but I prefer the uh, European and Japanese soundtrack version. Going into Echo the Dolphin CD, you get Echo the Dolphin 1 and Echo the Dolphin 2. Now. I don't know if Echo the Dolphin 2 was on CD. I think that's just going to be the Mega Drive game, isn't it? Let's take a look. No, it's a CD version. I didn't know Echo the Dolphin 2 got a CD release. Hmm. Well, whether it did or it didn't, it's on here. Echo the Dolphin 2 with a CD soundtrack. So that's a nice little hidden bonus. Now Night Trap, as I mentioned, does have the English and Japanese versions of the game, but you can't select it from the uh, actual game screen. To play the English version of the game, you have to put the uh, Mega CD, oh sorry, the Mega Drive Mini 2 into the English mode. Then the English version becomes available. The same thing goes for a few of the other Mega CD games as well. So for example, if you pick um, Final Fight CD on the Japanese version, you only get the Japanese version of the game. But if you put the machine setting into English, you get the English version of the game. Um, same with uh, Shining Force CD as well. That's also available in English. And so is Romancing the Three Kingdoms. That's also available in English. If you put the uh, Mega Drive 2 Mini into the uh, English mode. So it is very nice to see that some games have had the English versions put on there. Unfortunately, both Lunar games are Japanese only. There's no English versions for those. So how about lag? How does this machine handle lag? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to record me pressing the fire button here. And then we're going to put a timer in the bottom corner of the screen. Now this timer is not in frames per second or anything like that. But it will give you an idea of the difference between pressing the button on this and action happening on the screen compared to a real Mega Drive 2 since I'll be using the same uh, timing system for that. So here we go, what I'm going to do is basically as soon as the uh, button hits the PCB I'm going to start the timer and as soon as it fires we're going to stop the timer so let's get into it. So here we are with the real Mega Drive and I'm using a real official Sega 6 button Mega Drive controller wired up to it. Yeah the cable is white because I changed the cable out for an extra long one. The original cable with the Mega Drive 2 controllers in Japan is very short so that's why we have a white cable but this is an official controller. So again like with the Mega Drive Mini 2 I'm going to start the timer as soon as the button hits the uh, PCB and then we're going to stop the timer as uh, soon as the ship fires. And again, we're going to be playing this back in super slow motion to give you an idea of uh, how long it takes. So here we go. Let's start the game. All right, so let's take a look through 
other games which were never released. Okay, so here's one of them. This is a Tricycle Sun in English. And this was a game that was ported from a really old Sega arcade game onto Mega Drive hardware. So this will work on a real Mega Drive. It's a pretty interesting game. Basically all you have to do is go around and collect the flowers while avoiding the other cars. Now to kill the other cars you can jump over them, which I failed to do just then. Or you can um, kind of knock them with the uh, side barriers on the road. Like that. Here, watch this. See? Oops. Alright, let's take a look at some of the other unreleased games. To be honest, none of them are extremely stellar, <laughs> but uh, it's nice that they're on there. Okay, here's another one, Star Mobile. This is basically just some sort of puzzle game where you've got to weigh up the same amount of stars on both sides of the scales, basically to progress to the next level. Interesting idea, I guess. Let's see if we can weigh it out. Nope, it's too heavy. How about this side? Nope. On top. Yeah, a bit too heavy maybe. Yeah, oh, I've ruined that one. There you go, we balance the scales. <laughs> Now this originally had, a, I think it was a YMO music track on it, but they've uh, kind of reconfigured that uh, music track so it doesn't sound exactly like the original, but you can still t kind of recognize it. Here, take a listen. So they've kind of taken the old song and remixed it up a little bit so it doesn't sound exactly like the YMO music track. But uh, yeah, it still kind of sounds like it. YMO, in case you're wondering, is a ye is Yellow Magic Light Orchestra or something like that. Can't say I'm a big fan, so I'm not too sure, but I'm pretty sure that's what it stands for. Okay, so this game is certainly not for everyone. Basically what you do is guide your train down the track and try to avoid all the obstacles. You can collect powered ups, you can change tracks, and you can off let off a bit of steam to kill things that are behind you. I think the obstacle is, is just to get as far as along the track as you can. Ooh, I've been caught. And this one is Debbie Tobi. Or well, at least that's what's called in Japanese. And I believe this was an original game, not an arcade conversion, that uh, was also made for the Mega Drive, but never got released. And I can certainly see why it never got released, because it's a bit crap, to be honest. Uh, what you do is you rebound little devil things here, and uh, break the angel free. And of course, if you've got two players, player two controls the paddle at the top of the screen. And yeah, this is all you do. Not something I think Sega could sell full price, but maybe it would have been a game that they would put onto their um, download service since the Mega Drive did have a modem in Japan. And of course, the Sega Q, which is an updated version of Mega Q, which is also an updated version of the original game. Um, basically, Mega Q 2022 has been updated with more modern questions, and Sega Q is all about Sega. And we've got virtual racing on here as well, and yep, that works perfectly fine. And finally, uh, from the unreleased games, we've got Puyo Puyo Sun 2 player version of the game. And this is a specially made version of Puyo Puyo Sun for the Mega Drive. As you can see, they've done a reasonable attempt at recreating the intro here on the Mega Drive. Kind of. But, uh, 
this is certainly not uh, what I'd call a quality Puyo Puyo game. It's okay. Now you can play as a one player game so uh, don't worry about that. But uh, I mean you may as well just play Puyo Puyo 2 on the Mega Drive if uh, you want to play Puyo Puyo. It's still another nice bonus of a game which otherwise we never would have known about. And Star 2 also has some extra options. We've got the original mode or easy mode, which basically means you don't have to grind as much and so on, so which is a good thing. And finally, let's take a look at the special version of Fantasy Zone. Now, this is a game that was already on the Mega Drive, uh, basically Super Fantasy Zone, but for some reason they saw fit to uh, remake it. I'm not sure why, because Super Fantasy Zone is a really good game, but uh, this one is very, very faithful to the arcade game. Maybe it's arcade perfect. Uh, it certainly sounds like the arcade. Take a listen to this. Now what I don't get is it's got soundtrack there. It's a soundtrack Mega Drive version. But you can't uh, change that from what I know. And we've got the sound test here. But if you go into here, we also got another sound test which is the exact same thing. But now we've got sound effects as well. So I'm not too sure what's going on there. But um, taking a look at the actual game, you'll see that it is basically just Fantasy Zone. Uh, let's see. Got old version, new version. Speed up the rapid fire. Uh, fixed, beat, best, uh, whatever. <laughs> Not too sure what that's all about. Let's get into the game. Oh yeah, we got that rapid fire working nicely. So what do I think of the Mega Drive Mini 2? Well, to be honest, I like it. I like the way we got all those hidden extra games in there, such as Space Harrier along with Space Harrier 2, Echo the Dolphin 2 along with Echo the Dolphin. I also like the fact that games like Star Cruiser here have the speeded up mode. Um, same with Thunder Force 4, we've got speeded up modes as well. Makes the games more playable than they used to be. It's nice that they've added the arcade soundtrack to uh, Tatsujin or Truxton. And they've also given us an easy option for Fantasy Star 2. I also like the way that if you put it into the English version, you get the American versions of some of the games, so you can play some of them in English. Sadly, Luna is not included. Luna 1 or Luna 2, which is a big shame. Yeah, crap like Romance in the Three Kingdoms 3 was. Weird decision. But yeah, overall, it's a very nice package. Games play really well, and as you can see from the lag test, doesn't seem to be a problem whatsoever.